Season 1, Episode 7, About Me. Fala, galera! Bem-vindo à primeira temporada do podcast American Fluency, a melhor maneira de melhorar sua compreensão oral, ou seja, seu listening, em inglês americano. Meu nome é Levi Flint, sou um americano e aprendi a falar português e espanhol praticamente sozinho. Eu fiz este podcast principalmente para você que está realmente tentando melhorar seu listening e quer ser fluente em inglês. Se você gosta deste podcast, porém tem dificuldade de ouvir e entender inglês, eu tenho algo que pode lhe ajudar. Vá ao meu site americanfluency.com e inscreva-se como membro premium do podcast hoje. Eu simplifico cada episódio para ajudar você a aprender novas palavras, expressões e melhorar seu listening. Você terá acesso ao seguinte, um resumo do episódio em português, transcrição em inglês, cartas de vocabulário, áudio de pronúncia e um fórum de discussão para cada episódio. Você está pronto? Então vamos começar! Olá amigos e oi galera! What's up guys? We're back with another episode today. And in today's episode, I'm going to talk about me. I'm going to talk about myself and give you guys a little bit more of an insight into who I am. I think it's important when you're listening to a podcast, if you don't know anything about the person, like who they are, where they're from, etc., it's kind of hard to connect. And I think that like after a certain amount of episodes, you might lose interest. At least I do in my experience. So I think the more you know about a person, uh, whether it's a YouTube channel or a podcast or uh, anything, I think that it helps you to connect to that person and to just know, you know, who they are. And in this episode, I am just by myself. I don't have anybody here with me, uh, which I thought made sense because I'm just going to talk about myself. So let's begin with my childhood. So I was born in San Marcos, Texas, which is in central Texas, right between Austin, the capital, and San Antonio, the big city of the south. Of the state. So I was born there and I lived there for a short amount of time. That's actually where my mom is from. So we actually moved away because my dad was in the army. So he went to college for four years and then he joined the army. And so when you do that in the United States, it gives you a higher rank immediately. You have a higher rank, you, you receive more pay. And it's something that he was always interested in. So we moved around. We moved to uh, Washington, D.C., the state of Kentucky. Uh, we ended up living in the state of Kansas. Moved around a lot when I was a little kid. And my younger brother, he's four years younger than me, he was born in Kentucky during the time that uh, my dad was in the Army. And that was actually, funny enough, that is my very first memory, is when I'm at home with a babysitter my mom comes home and she has my brother and that's my first memory when i was four years old that's the furthest back in time that i can remember so my parents always said that i was a really calm kid like i did not i didn't get in trouble i wasn't crazy i wasn't screaming and acting you know like a crazy person i was pretty well behaved i was involved with like martial arts Uh, I like to exercise. I like to run around. I like to read a lot. I like to draw a lot. I was a pretty creative kid. And I also became really into, really interested in juggling, like juggling balls, juggling pins. Um, I learned to ride a unicycle. And I had a, a close friend when I was a kid that also was interested in this. And we we're really weird kids, but it was just something that we liked to do. When I was a teenager, I got interested in guitar. So I started playing electric guitar. I really liked it a lot. It was really fun. And then I started progressing more towards like sports. I became really interested and obsessed with basketball. Like that's still my favorite sport today. Unfortunately, when I became really interested in basketball, I started leaving guitar behind and I hate it to this day. To this day, 
I regret it. I'm like, man, I should have just kept playing guitar, you know, a couple nights a week. Kept playing, kept playing. Because I would be today in my 30s and be a pretty damn good guitar player. Um, but unfortunately, I stopped playing for the most part. And yeah, it's a big regret of mine today. But yeah, in high school, I played a lot of sports. I ran track. I played basketball. I had a truck when I was 16, like a good Texas boy. <laughs> and around this time, when I was a teenager, 16, 17, 18, I became interested in Latin America. I took my first trip to Mexico with my family. Um, and this was at Cozumel, Mexico, close to Cancun. Did some scuba diving, really enjoyed life um, down there. And because of that, I became really interested in learning Spanish and also learning Portuguese and spending a lot of time living and traveling in Latin America. So that was a really formative, uh, you know, time of my life. <laughs> and it's, uh, you know, it's led to the, the man that I have become today. So then I went to college and I went to college, funny enough, in the town where I was born, in San Marcos. So in that town, there is a state university called Texas State University. And it's, it's growing every year, growing, growing, growing. And I studied, uh, I did a bachelor's in, uh, a bachelor's of arts in humanities, in Spanish, with a focus on foreign language. And I started taking trips down to Mexico in my free time. I would go down to Mexico to study Spanish at a little language school that a friend of mine in Texas, he knew the owners of the language school. So I, the first time I went with him, and then after that, I continued going by myself over and over and over. Every time I had free time and I had free money, I really loved to go to Mexico and uh, learn and have fun and all of that. So after college, I took a break from everything and I actually traveled to South America. I went to Argentina and I also visited Chile. And I was down in South America for like five months, almost six months. And it was an awesome time in my life. I really enjoyed it. It was fun. It was just amazing. Uh, it was a really also formative time in my life. I really felt like that I learned a lot, experienced a lot. I had uh, really a good experience overall. It was a really good experience. And then I came back and I went to grad school, graduate school in Arizona, the state of Arizona. I got a position as a teaching assistant um, for a master's degree in teaching Spanish as a foreign language. So the program had a, a lot of focus on Spanish and also applied linguistics. So it was kind of both combined in one. So there was a lot of teaching involved. I had to teach, I had to work. But by doing that, it paid for my entire master's degree. And I walked away with zero debt owed whatsoever. And I got a pretty good education. And that was a challenging program. And also just living in Arizona was badass. Like it was a that is an amazing underrated state. So I had the Grand Canyon was nearby, Sedona, um, uh, the state of Utah, Nevada, Las Vegas, everything was within two hours, two and a half or three hours, I should say. Really, really cool place. And if you ever have the chance to visit Arizona, it is an excellent state to visit. And so now I'm an adult, I'm fully grown, <laughs> I'm in my 30s and, you know, I started kind of moving into this world of working online, working remotely. That became a really big passion of mine and I've made it work. I have. Like, I'm not 100% where I want to be. I have a lot to accomplish, a lot to improve on. But I decided after grad school that I did not want to continue down the road of academics and become a professor Instead, I decided that I was much more interested in the world of remote work, of online business, internet marketing, things like that. So I began working for uh, a few different businesses, more in the sales and marketing type of world. Um, 
but there were remote online companies. And this allowed me to be traveling, to spend time in Latin America, um, and also to be able to kind of work from almost anywhere with a really good internet connection. And I also started working and I used my master's degree to get a job working for uh, actually two different colleges where I teach online Spanish, create online courses. And because of this experience with creating online courses and online classes with colleges, combined with my online marketing and sales experience, I decided to create um, my, my, my brand, my company, and that is Fluent Industries. And under that is American Fluency, uh, where I'm creating online English content for Latinos, for Brazilians, and for Spanish speakers. And also, my other side project is Latino Fluency, which is really Spanish content, Spanish lessons, Spanish uh, resources for English speakers, and maybe even for people uh, that speak another language. So that is really where I'm at today. And I'm trying to kind of make everything work. And I consider myself now to be an online entrepreneur. And that's my goal. That's what I'm trying to do uh, is kind of take all of my interests, all of my experience and combine them into this one thing. So it's a lot of work. It's exciting work though. And you know, I'm excited and happy to be where I'm at today. So that's it for today's episode. I hope you learned a little bit about me. I hope you maybe picked up some new expressions, some new vocabulary, and hopefully listening to this podcast is helping you really develop your listening ability and also develop an ability to better express yourself in conversation. That's my goal. And again, thank you so much for listening. I really do appreciate it. Until next episode. Later. Oi, pessoal. Muito obrigado por ouvir mais um episódio deste podcast. Para não perder nenhuma dica, por favor, siga a American Fluency no Spotify, YouTube, Instagram ou Facebook. Vá a AmericanFluency.com e inscreve-se como membro do podcast hoje. Lá eu simplifico cada episódio para ajudar você a aprender novas palavras, expressões e melhorar seu listening. Muito obrigado de novo. Até o próximo episódio. Tchau.